And joining us now, New York Times Chief White House Correspondent Peter Baker, former Governor and Congressman John Kasich, who also ran for president, and former Congressional Budget Office Director Doug Holtz Eakin, uh, president of the conservative think tank American Action Forum. So, Peter, the president says he's not going to negotiate on the debt ceiling with the speaker. He's also saying no for now to using the 14th Amendment to avoid default. Uh, I noticed that La Lawrence Tribe, the constitutional scholar and professor at Harvard, has a, an op-ed in your paper today saying that he's changed his mind and believes the 14th Amendment should be raised as a big issue, uh, which is not what he thought a couple of years ago when this was being widely debated. Uh, do you think the White House is considering the 14th Amendment? Well, I think you heard the president tell our colleague Stephanie Rule just last week that he hasn't gotten there yet. He used the word yet, and I think that's important to remember. That doesn't mean he's going to get there, but when you use that word, it suggests that you might get there at some point. And what he's signaling to Republicans is, I have an option here, and I may yet, in fact, pull that option to get out of this, uh, you know, this box that you're trying to put me in. So he's not saying he's going to do it. He's not promising. He's even considering it, but I think he's hinting at it in a way that's meant to influence negotiations going forward. Uh, Governor Kasich, you've seen this movie before as a congressman under President Clinton. The only, uh, the deficit's only grown since then by a lot, by more than four times with the 2017 tax cut. So are they going to kick the can down the road? Can they? Short-term extension? What is your bet here? Well, remember, uh, Andrea, I was chairman of the Budget Committee when we entered into yeah. negotiations with Bill Clinton and ended up with a balanced budget and surpluses and paying down debt for it. I mean, people can't believe that was true. They think I'm talking about some fantasy, but we actually <laughs> did it. Look, I don't, I don't think it's unreasonable. I think it's very reasonable for Republicans to say, look, We'll, we'll increase the debt ceiling, but we've got to have something here that begins to control spending. I understand they didn't do it before. But, you know, they all like to spend. The Democrats love to spend. The Republicans love to spend. It's just the Republicans tend to feel guilty. But at the end of the day, the debt is exploding. It is a threat to economic growth. It's a threat to our children's future. And reasonable steps to try to get this spending under control uh, I think is fair-minded. You know, freezes and all these other things where there's no specificity, I don't buy into that. But saying that we're not going to spend the unspent COVID money, I, it makes some sense. There's some other things that we can do. But let's signal to the American people, let's signal to the to people who are involved with this economy, which is really all of us, that, look, we need to understand changes have to come. And this is a first step. And then we can do a lot more later. And, and I, I understand, Doug, if you could weigh in here, that there, eventually you're going to have to be some budget cuts, and I, I totally understand that position. But to demand that the president give up things like the IRA and other, you know, bills that he fought so hard for for months and months, that seems like beyond the pale to ask him to just roll back his whole legislative agenda. <laughs> Well, I mean, <clears throat> the, the House has passed a bill that is clearly not going to pass the Senate. The White House has a position that is clearly not going to pass the Senate. Yeah. So it's time for everybody to give a little bit and get a bipartisan piece of legislation that gets 60 votes in the Senate, gets the 218 in the House, and the president can sign, because we do have to raise the debt limit. Um, the governor's right about the state of the nation's finances. They're, a, they're a, a really abysmal. And that's not all going to get done this year, but they, they have to be able to get to yes on something that acknowledges the problem, does a little bit, and also raises the debt limit. And th that's the nature of politics. They, they have to pass legislation. It, it won't make everyone happy, but they can't get done. You know, I'm reminded, Peter, of some of the things that have happened in the past, 2011, when they got downgraded by standards and poor and cost the government $1.3 billion. It would be a lot worse this time. You know, the dollars are bigger and the impact on higher interest rates would be bigger. And it doesn't have to happen June 1st, is the argument that people in the know are making, that it could happen at any moment. It could happen after Tuesday's meeting, if Tuesday's meeting breaks up in complete disarray. The markets would crash and, you know, it would cost the government a lot of money. 
Yeah, the question is whether the cliff is scary, okay? In the past, when we've kind of driven up to it before, people did kind of blink and say, no, we don't want to go over that cliff. But there is this sort of sense in Washington right now, at least among some people, that, oh, you know, some way or another, we'll figure out our way around it. Maybe, in fact, President Biden will use the, the 14th Amendment to argue that he doesn't have to actually follow the debt ceiling, or maybe some way, uh, you know, they'll, somebody will pass a stopgap, or they'll, somebody will blink. And I think that there's not much of a fear factor in Washington the way there has been in the past about what that cliff really adds up to. And I think that part of it is because we did get downgraded and the world didn't seem to end very much. Are there consequences to it? Yes, there were, but the world didn't seem to end. And so there's certainly a, at least some small part of the Congress that's looking at this and saying, hey, we can go ahead and, 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 and roll right up to that cliff. And it may not be the worst thing in the world. Now, the question is whether that feels the same at the end of May rather than the beginning of May, because we're still in the early right. stages of this negotiation. They won't actually get serious really until the last hours and days right before the June 1 deadline, if that's the real deadline. Governor Kasich, we, there's been a notable silence from the business community, the Chamber of Commerce, Wall Street, big business, uh, not speaking out about the debt ceiling and how dangerous this could be. Are they that afraid of, of Speaker McCarthy and the Republicans? Uh, or just mm, they also I, want, I don't they think, want I don't, budget cuts? Yeah, I, don't I don't know. Think. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, look, you cannot go and get close to defaulting. It makes no sense. It will hurt the country. It will hurt the people. I, I can't tell you why the chamber isn't saying anything, but there are a number of groups out there now uh, that, are, are, that are voicing concern about the magnitude of this debt. Now, Andrea, here's the thing. We're not talking about cuts, really. I mean, people want to say cuts. We should be talking about reforms taking an outdated old bureaucracy and figuring out how to breathe new life in it by making changes that make sense. And if you do that, and that's exactly what we were doing in the 90s, it's exactly what I did as governor, you just get yourself in a position of where you think a little differently. So, and then ultimately with the entitlements, particularly with Medicare and Social Security, people in the country really don't understand how that system works. I've re recommended to some people that they create a commission, maybe made up of some politicians and some people who are out here in the real world, and start letting people know about the consequences of ignoring it. But we can't ignore these things over time. It makes it more difficult later if we don't begin to do some things now.